Hi, this is Mohammed Siddiq from Pakistani Social Entrepreneurship Academy today and a guest with me and he is going to share a very, very unique experience. We all have a different myths about different cultures, different religions in different countries and people of that country. Oh, they look the same. They don't, doesn't look the same. They have an accent just like I have an accent, you know. So, however, our common friend, I'm sure you probably already know his name. If you don't know him, I'm going to put him on a main screen. Mitch Carson, he is the brand maker, by the way. I don't know why he called celebrity makers. You know, you need to call him some brand makers. He really take a business who is like a, people don't know them and create a huge brand out of them. He has been involved in the media and many shopping channels and a lot more. I'm going to ask him to tell him, tell you about himself. That way I don't really do a justice about his introduction. However, our topic today is he recently has been in Pakistan for almost like a month. And by the way, if you heard about Ramadan or fasting month in Muslim country and he was in that time, that's the toughest time to be in that country. And it is, it was very, very hard. I'm going to ask him to share all of his experience. Mitch, welcome. Thank you for having me, Sadiq. I, I always enjoy conversing with you and, and working with you as we have for the past several years. Wonderful. Mitch, my favorite question is what happened where were you and who you were surrounded with what makes you the come up with the crazy idea for visiting pakistan for in the summer hot month especially in ramadan yeah well yeah, as you know this was my second visit to, to pakistan uh, three years ago uh, in november it'll be three years i was invited by a mutual friend rehan alawala to go visit pakistan where i spent six days only in karachi so that was a limited experience to just karachi 20 million people and then i accepted an invitation to come back in you know, last month I was there for almost four weeks and toured from Karachi. I then flew to Lahore. I went all the way through KPK, which is a questionable area where uh, most Americans never set foot in that area, uh, all the way up to Deer, where I was accompanied uh, by one of the senators of the country and a religious party leader named Siraj ul -Haq. And uh, I, I had accepted the request to write his biography, the story of his life and the story about the party of, of Jamaat Islami, which is a political party of, of great strength, uh, an old party since 1941 they were formed over in Pakistan. And I didn't realize this till I went there, but I went there also to speak at a couple conferences. So I combined some business with, let's say, almost charitable work because the project to write his biography is unpaid. I did that because of a larger purpose. And one to, you know, not everything is about money in this world. Uh, and I'm not a religious person, I'm a curious person. And I wanted to understand the inner workings of Islam. And I went right to the extreme, to the most religious fundamentalist group inside Pakistan, a country of over 200 million people. Yeah. So I wanted to go and experience this. You know, I was, I also shot a documentary film, which is in the editing process now of my, my trip, my voyage over there. I call it a voyage because it was an adventure being an American and Siraj al Haq had me disguise my nationality. He said, Mitch, I'm very afraid. He spoke very limited English, but he says, I'm very afraid you are American because they will not understand. You must be Turkish. You must tell everybody you're Turkish because the uh, Pakistani people love Turkish. And I all of a sudden took on the persona of a Turkish person. Now, nobody questioned it. They all smiled and they said, where are you from? You know, if they spoke English, I said, I'm from Turkey. Oh, and I said, gobble, 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 gobble. Not that Turkey. That's something we eat in America. You know, that they eat in America. I said, I'm from Turkey over, you know, not too far away. And they all laughed and, you know, liked it. And everybody loved Turkey. End of conversation. No more discussion. But I have an American accent, of course, the way I speak English, but a lot of people study in America. The, the question never even surfaced. So it was a way to safeguard my security where I had to per the urging of Siraj al -Haq, state that I was Turkish. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'm sure, you know, thank you. I'm I'm going to listen to everything. And the first people who are watching this, this is amazing. The first hand knowledge you are getting it from Mitch Carson. That's what I'm learning exactly with you. So keep watching. And that leads to my next question, Mitch, how you were treated, you know, there's a misconception about, uh, oh, American Pakistani people don't like Americans. And how are you treated? You would ever go back? Are you, you are glad you'll be back? And that 
that way you never will go back again or you may even think about going and you created some friendship tell us what you think well i'm going to go back to three years ago this is when my misconception about pakistan and the pakistani people was completely inaccurate now in my life uh, my time on the planet as a professional speaker and traveler and curious individual i've been to 51 countries and i'll say the hospitality of the pakistani people is unparalleled i've never been treated so well in any country by any ethnic group not even close completely different than the hospitality of many other countries. I couldn't put my hand in my pocket for any meals when I went out with people. And these are people that made small amounts of money, some of them. I mean, these were assistants to the people that I was interacting with, wanted to have a dinner with me. And maybe $300 a month, they made an income. They wouldn't allow me to even buy my dinner. And I know that that was a stretch for these people, but it, it would have been an insult if I would have said, no, I've got to pay for this. They wouldn't let me. And it's just a cultural norm, I understand. Everybody's like that. I mean, I know you, you're a generous man. I think it's just part of your culture. And the people are very warm. They treated me well. Uh, not one person wanted to kill me and jihad me, which is the common mistake that people have about Pakistan. Oh, they're all crazies and they're fundamentalists. Yeah, they're a religious group of people. They do pray five times a day. But how's that any different than the Christians who pray and do their deal? They're a, a peaceful people is what I've observed. I didn't see anybody running around wanting to stab me or kill the American, as you see, as described in the news. Uh, it's just not accurate. It is not accurate. And it's it's almost comical how far removed it is from the reality. So I was treated extremely well. I liked, uh, I love the people. And the reason I went back a second time is because the first time I was treated so well, and it wasn't an accident because the second time I was treated equally well. And I was in multiple cities. Nobody treated me poorly, nor did I feel at, at risk with my body or anything else. Thank you so much. That's like a very refreshing to actually hear it from a friend who been there on his own. And by the way, I was not with him. In fact, we, I really wanted to go with Mitch and he felt that, oh, I will feel more secure if you are with me. I said, no, you are in safe hand. You just go and experience yourself. So you're not shielded from Sadiq. <laughs> well, and I remember I called you on the phone when I was in KPK. Now, KPK, and this is from my understanding, and you would know more, it's your home country. KPK is the area of Pakistan which has the most negative press and where people are considered, the women are, are completely covered. And that is true. They're more fundamentalist in their beliefs of, of Islam, I found, that the women are segregated more than they are in the cities like they're not fully they're fully covered up in kpk versus karachi you get people that aren't wearing the covering the hijab at all but in kpk they're a hundred percent covered uh and it's considered the dangerous area but it's just more conservative it's it's no different than let's say dallas texas which is a big city in america where people are progressive and they may be christian practicing their religion and go to church every sunday but then you might get a different reality from somebody who's living a hundred miles outside of the city, their perception of the world is quite different. And that's what you get in KPK. You get a smaller town thinking and actions. Uh, and that's that's the difference. But we have all these subcultures that exist in Pakistan, much like we do in America. Wonderful. Wonderful. Mitch, based on what you already gone through two trips now, and you are, I'm sure, probably thinking, oh, I need to do more, expand my relationship with the Pakistani CEOs and entrepreneurs and all that stuff. So what are your immediate future plans to working with the Pakistani entrepreneurs or CEOs of a company? I'm going to be going back in the near future so I can strengthen and further my relationships that I was able to develop there. People are eager to do business in Pakistan with the West. And I think it's only the news that stands in the in, in the way of us progressing because there are very smart people. Intellectual capital is very high in that country. They're eager to learn, they're eager to grow, and I think it's a huge opportunity for Americans to tap into that. As I'm going to continue to tap into those resources, I have no fear because the news is not real. Adil, in the interview, you mentioned that uh, you spoke at different conferences. Tell us who are the audience and what was the topic you were sharing and how you are very well received as a quote-unquote Turkish law, you know? Yeah, well, 
The Turkish part was when I was was touring around with Siraj al Haq. While I was in Karachi and Lahore speaking at conferences, I was just the American business guy who was there to talk about entrepreneurship and how to grow your celebrity, your brand, your image in your marketplace. So it's what I communicate to the public, both in my country, any country that will receive the message. So I spoke at conferences to small business owners. There were even some students. And I had two attendees, a 14-year-old year old and a 16 year old these were young boys that were developing software who were brilliant it was amazing how smart they were and they developed apps that were incredible they just didn't know how to get it out in the marketplace they were looking for somebody to help them. I mean and I think this is just a small example of what's possible over there because the intellectual capital the the mentality of the Pakistani people is progress education let's do it it's only because of the political restraints that they're not at more successful How, uh, that that's a great inspirational uh, message from you in fact uh, here's a good part you know every government in everywhere in the world so we we are not against governments here by the way every government has so many processes and for good governance and bad governance that's like a political debate we are not in a political debate here sure however Pakistani government one thing i know they don't stop you to working on entrepreneurship at all and having a small business there's no kind of quote unquote censorship and stop it. Oh, don't do it. We need my permission. That's pretty open. What was your experience? My experiences were, they just don't know how to communicate to the West. There's a lot of fear and it comes from the media. And one of the, one of the objectives I had was to bridge that gap to let them know that it is possible. There are Americans who would be or are receptive to doing business with the East. All you have to do is communicate and you start communicating and there's a trust that develops once you have an interaction and a friendship with people. It starts being friends. Before you start asking to do business, just establish a relationship. We're all human beings at, when we wake up in the morning and when we put our heads on our pillows. And in between that time, we're doing the same thing. We're eating, we're, we're praying, we're spending time with our families, we're growing emotionally and spiritually along this path, and we're all the same. We just have some different beliefs and different cultural norms. And it just takes a little time and patience to understand the differences. And that once you overcome these differences, business, commerce can exist. So true, so true. I couldn't agree more on this one. So Mitch, if you have to just answer, okay, hey, what are the three things you learned from this one, which is like actionable, somebody could, you can help someone to actually understand three things about your trip in Pakistan, how if they want to start learning about Pakistani people are misconception, removing their misconception, what would be three things that you want to share so that way there's action? Well, all right, three things I understood and I learned. I because I'm a, an educated man and I love to read, I purchased a copy of the Holy Quran. To re, I didn't read it cover to cover, but I certainly looked at all the chapter headings and read the first few paragraphs of most of the chapters to understand, at least on a broad brush, the understanding of the culture, because it is a religious country. So before you go and judge something, read up, draw your own conclusions about a particular group of people. Come to your own conclusions. Use your own intelligence. We've all gone to school. If you're on this call, more than likely, you're a person that's eager to learn and understand. If you're here. So do your own research. Don't let Fox News shape your opinions, your values. That is very biased. So allow yourself to learn, number one. Number two, I would reach out to people that you don't understand. If you don't understand, find that I have many Pakistani friends on my Facebook. Look me up, friend them, to begin a conversation. Because how the, the walls that separate us culturally, physically, spiritually, are all self-imposed. And if you're able to reach out, touch somebody, and just communicate, it, there's no safer venue than Facebook. Just say hello, and you're going to have a and an exchange that will warm your heart, warm your spirit, and grow your intellect. Because my judgment of Pakistanis before I visited the country is almost 180 degrees different, different than my reality today. 
And the third thing I would say is find a way to go to something outside of your comfort zone. Well, albeit, is it Pakistan? Is it India? Is it Dubai? Which I could have a whole other discussion about that country. Find a way to break up because prior to 10 years ago, when I, I went through some life changes and had a different career and different marriage, you know, I mean, I got out of my marriage. I hadn't traveled much. Travel opens your eyes. Albeit an experience to Pakistan, which I encourage because it's a great country to visit. Uh, go somewhere else to experience a different culture because once you start experiencing this, live it, are able to interact with the native local people, your eyes open up. You become smarter. The more traveled somebody is, I believe grows your IQ. It's your social IQ, your emotional IQ, and worldliness comes through travel, comes through experiencing different culture. If you only have seen Natchez, Mississippi or a, you know, a small town, you have that mentality. You're limited to it and it's not your fault. It is not your fault to think that way. That's all you know. And it's ignorance is almost a harsh word to say, but it's just a limited exposure to what other realities have to offer. So get out of your comfort zone, plan a vacation other than a tourist spot, see something different because the opportunities are large in front of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just on a light note, Mitch, you mentioned that the more you travel, your IQ gets better. That's why now I know why Mitch Carson is way smarter than me on this case because oh. I, don't, I did travel to that level yet. I got a couple of years on you. You can catch up quickly. <laughs> Good. So, Mitch, I'm going to put you on a spot right now, and I am hoping that you will kind of you know, say yes to my question. I have no idea what the answer is coming, but I'm going to ask you a question. You may already know that I am. Uh, we have started a Pakistani Social Entrepreneurship Academy. That's a project of Al Sharif Foundation. They are yes. aiming to create a one million entrepreneurs in Pakistan. Just like you mentioned, they have eager desire to actually connect with the West and actually do business. We are teaching them, starting with a very small portion of like a one of the way how they can make money online, even earn a hundred dollar a month you know a hundred dollar a month can go a long way for feeding a family in pakistan we Very are much. feeding them a fish we are not giving them a fish there's no money involved giving them so for that purpose we are looking for people like you who want to endorse pakistani social entrepreneurship academy and plus uh, i can come back to you later mitch i need you to teach uh, this topic to uh, uh, not one to one in a group fashion, and we can do an interview like this in 10, 20, 30 minutes. So we are done, and then people can learn on a mass level. We handle everything else on the other side. What would would you say yes to that, Mike? The quest? Uh, an emphatic, strong, resounding yes. Of course, I will. Thank you so much. I am blessed and honored to get that because I was just holding my breath. I have no idea what the answer would have come from you, Mitch, because no, we, yeah. didn't, we, we, did not, we did not discuss this one before the call. No, we so, did not. Yeah. So if uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, well, Mitch is by the by the way, I have not told you how we met. By the way, a few years ago we were on a marketers cruise. So we both have quote unquote marketers, and I was introducing on a stage myself, and I was speaking way faster than what I'm speaking right now because I learned from Mitch so far. I have not implemented everything what he advised me to do so far, but I'm working on it. And I was speaking so fast. Mitch was in the audience. I didn't know Mitch at all at that time, and he didn't know me either. And as we come out of the room and we were sitting on a lunch table with another friend, and Mitch told me, Sadiq, I did not heard a word what you said. I just tuned you out right away. And that was like almost like, a, oh my God, it's like an embarrassing situation sitting on the same lunch table where you're telling somebody on your face, oh, like I didn't understand you, but I took it, that criticism as a very positive and I, I worked on that one. So this is my very improved version. If you can't even still understand, imagine that few years ago. And that turns out to be that conversation into a friendship. Now we are like, you know, when he is stuck at the airport traveling in the world, he calls me, do this. <laughs> and we can call 24 by seven almost any day. We don't need a permission. Hey, oh, can I call you nine to five or something? Mitch, thank you so much for criticizing me on that table. I'm just taking this opportunity because this will be a part of the interview because here is a lesson. When somebody criticizes you for something with the positive criticism, the person who is receiving, they need to take as a positive on the other side. So that way, you know, many times that turns out to be a very good relationship for long term. That has been the case on this one. What well, I saying? could see that you were a smart guy. The challenge was, and a lot of people who have English as a second language, and I do this because Spanish is my second language, they tend to speak too quickly. And if you slow down to enunciate your words more clearly so people understand you, you'll be understood. And that's what you've done. You've taken the time to slow down or articulate your words. I know you're very passionate and get act and get <clears throat> very excited about what you're talking about, but you've slowed down. Now you're understood. Thank Better. you. 
Thank you. So my friends, if you're still watching this and you like our conversation and you feel that there is some spark inside you, you want to contribute to a nonprofit who are helping uh, creating 1 million entrepreneurs. Yeah, you, it's only $100 for one entrepreneur and you will, we will connect you to that entrepreneur so you know what progress they are making. So this like a people to people connection. You don't, I'm not asking for money really. It's up to you if you want to pay $100, it's okay. If you just want to ha have some skills that you want to teach somebody, what I want you to do is take your cell phone out. Here's my American number. Number is 307-269-2086. I repeat, 307-269-2086 in a message, put a word mentor, M-E-N-T-O-R, as you can see on the screen. And I, of course, you, you can text me on this one. There's no need to call. This is just a, just a number for get a text, receiving a text. So maybe even we can have a Mitch arrange your next trip. We'll go with Mitch in Pakistan if you want to go. It's all your choices. We are not, there's no binding. Whole idea is let's get to know each other. The world is too small and we need to do some good things about bridging the gap. Mitch, thank you so much for making a trip. What would you say as a final word as we finish the interview? Do something different. Get out of your comfort zone. We've heard that expression, but if you don't stretch, you don't grow. And having your mind open to new opportunities and a new culture will enhance your life and improve your intelligence. Thank you. So today's word is curious. So be curious, just like Mitch Carson.